to today's Steris Tech Talk on an introduction to industrial sterilization and Steris AST. Steris Tech Talks are a series of webinars covering subjects relating to gas and radiation sterilization processing and the laboratory testing and validation services which support these processes. My name is James Warner and I'm the Marketing Communications Manager for Steris Applied Sterilization Technologies. I'll be the host for today's event. Our presenter today is Brian McAvoy. Brian is the Senior Director for Global Technologies at Steris Applied Sterilization Technologies. A microbiologist by original qualification, he has 20 years experience in the area of healthcare sterilization and has held various technical, operations and leadership roles covering all the available sterilization modalities. All attendees are on mute for the presentation. However, we would like to encourage everyone to submit questions using the questions function on the GoToWebinar control panel. There will be 15 minutes following the presentation in which questions will be answered. Today's presentation will be recorded and uploaded to our Steris Applied Sterilization Technologies YouTube channel. Please note that continuing education credits are not provided as part of this webinar. And now over to Brian to begin the presentation. Many thanks, James, for the introduction. Uh, I just want to check, can you hear me okay? Yes, loud and clear. Perfect. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, today, I have the great pleasure in talking to you on the topic of industrial sterilization and sharing some of the insights about ourselves here at Steris Applied Sterilization Technology. This webinar will serve as an introduction to a series of technology webinars that we are hosting over the coming months. We at Steris AST are excited to bring this series of webinars to you. You will hear from our subject matter experts on each of the available sterilization technologies, the validations and the associated testing with those technologies. The agenda for today's webinar is shown on the right, and in the time allotted, I hope the webinar is an informative introduction to the sterilization of medical devices. In the time we have today, I intend to briefly discuss the various technologies with some insight into current and future applications. So let's first discuss why do we sterilize? So if we start with some facts. Medical devices are critical components of patient care. The 400 billion market with growth drivers of aging population and global access to healthcare. Products are delivered to patients sometimes through invasive surgeries and therefore the risk of infection is ever present. For instance, in the US, hospital acquired infections affect some 1.7 million patients each year. Therefore, as part of a holistic strategy to minimize such risk of, of infection, strategies such as infection control, disinfection, and sterilization are applied. And hence, medical devices are supplied as sterile. In the US, some 40 billion devices are supplied each year as sterile. So what do we mean about sterile? We use the term sterile, sterilized, sterilization. But simply put, it means that the device is rendered free of viable microorganisms, such as bacteria, viruses, and molds. Each sterilization process is designed to deliver a given amount of lethality, which is quantified in terms of the sterility assurance level, or SAL. The SAL is actually a statistical probability of one single microorganism surviving the process. This probability for medical devices is usually required to be one in one million, or referred to as an SAL of 10 to the minus six. And all of these terms can be referenced in the latest version of ISO 11139, which gives all the terminology and definitions associated with our industry. Sterilization may be performed on a device at any stage throughout the manufacture and supply of the device. Sterilization process can be a terminal sterilization of a fully packaged device. For instance, fully packaged, fully cartoned, 
fully palletized. This is typically how contract sterilization uh, provides sterilization services. Or alternatively, it may involve some component of aseptic manufacture, where you have some inline application of, of clean aseptic and sterilization. In the medical device supply chain, ster sterilization may be applied at the point of manufacture in the production line or maybe outsourced to a specialist provider such as ourselves here in Steris AST, or it may be provided at the point of use in the hospital. Hospital sterilization typically applies to reusable devices and is outside the scope of this presentation. This presentation will focus on those technologies that are typically applied to terminal sterilization of single-use devices. So if we recap, drill assurance is a probability, and we cannot quality control test devices as that entails destructive de testing of valuable medical devices. Therefore, we need to validate a stable and repeatable process to demonstrate it's capable of consistently delivering the required microbiocidal inactivation. The routine sterilization process is subsequently a repeat of this process where critical process parameters are measured to demonstrate repeatability of the process originally validated. Again, it's that demonstration of control, a control process. As shown in the eyes of definition of validation, it's providing confidence that our control process satisfies the requirements for quality and does so consistently. When one reflects on the eyes of definition and the words planned and systematic actions, it becomes apparent as to why we are highly regulated. Sterilization is a vast array of international and regional standards that have been agreed through consensus by subject matter experts and industry stakeholders. These standards both define our normative requirements necessary for compliance, but also often provide informative guidance to assist users demonstrate compliance in accordance with industry best practice. So in this slide, I'm listing some of the relevant standards and regulations that apply uh, to our industry and the associated validation activities. So for instance, you can see ISO 11135 is applicable to EO sterilization. ISO 11137 applies to radiation processes. And then you've got supporting standards such as standards for biological indicators, standards for testing ethylene oxide residuals, and microbiology-based standards such as ISO 11737. I think it's useful before we, as we talk about the current technologies and methodology, I think it's useful that we review how we've arrived at to where we are today. I think it's beneficial to see how the technologies have developed over time. So on this slide, I plan to share somewhat of a timeline um, of some of the key developments in the industry. And I suppose a good starting point is pre 1900s the importance of microorganisms and infection became known through the work of researchers such as Bechamp, Lister, Pasteur, and many more. In fact, the first mention of infection dates back to the mid 16th century, where Fracastrio, an Italian poet and physician, Describe what many believe were the origins of germ theory. Of greater importance to our discussions today is how technologies were developed in the late 1800s and throughout the 1900s to provide sterile products. If one considers industry leaders like Fred Kilmer of Jane J pioneered the use of moist heat to sterilize surgical wound dressings. The early work of Hall and Griffiths with EO in the early 1900s. The development of E-Beam by Charles R. Tandy of Ethicon in the mid 1950s. And again, an interesting development there was E-Beam actually preceded um, gamma radiation. Gamma radiation followed where it was then seen to be more applicable to and available for bulk sterilization, a more stable sterilization process. You know, the deployment of gamma radiation by John Maysfield and his team at Isometics 
uh, really brought that technology to the industry. Then throughout the 60s and 70s, uh, a lot of work by NASA uh, really seeded the early development of process validation and stability assurance that culminated in the ISO standards that were developed in the early 90s. Now, more recent times, we see a resurgence back to accelerator-based radiation technology, such as E-beam and now X-ray. So again, as you can see over the time frame, our industry has developed um, into now, I'd say, what is a, a very well-defined, both in terms of technologies, but also in terms of international standards and best practice. Let's now talk about the technology and how they actually deliver strategy assurance. And in this section, I'm going to just really touch on some of the technologies, probably not to as great a depth as we will in some of the future webinars, but it's really to just share some insight um, about the diversity of the technologies that are available. We at Stairs AST provide what we call a technology neutral service offering. What we mean by this is that we provide the widest possible portfolio of technology so that in partnership with our customers, we can apply that technology which best suits the product requirements. The product has both requirements for sterility, that we've talked quite a bit about, but also has a need for optimal functioning of the device. Additional considerations in technology selection is the availability of capacity and the speed at which products can be delivered to critical patient needs. So the value of a medical device product is only realized when it's actually used in the hospital environment uh, with, its, with the patient. Hence, the, the, the importance of sterilization is also equaled by the importance of getting the device efficiently to the patient. As you can see from this slide, our technology offering is subdivided to radiation and gas technology supported by extensive laboratory and technical validation services. I will touch on some of those support services a, a little later, but first, let's talk a bit more about the technologies themselves. This, this slide is a little bit detailed, but essentially there's a few take home messages um, that I'd like to convey. And the slide tries to quickly compare and contrast the technology. But the key messages here are, number one, microbial inactivation is achieved by a sterilizing agent, whether that's ionizing radiation or a gas. The sterilizing agent may have varying penetration capabilities and varying material compatibility. The processes themselves will vary by means of their operation, their process time, and their ability to scale. They can reflect back on the earlier slide when we talked about how many devices are actually sterilized each year. So as much as we have technologies and innovative technologies, they must be of a scale sufficient to deliver the throughput of devices that need it in the healthcare uh, environment. Gaseous processes have the advantage of material compatibility, whereas radiation processes typically have the advantage of very quick turn times. Hence, it becomes necessary to have this extensive technology neutral portfolio available to us so that we can best fit to design the composition and the needs of the product so that we deliver the best outcomes for our customers. So in terms of technology or modality selection, I suppose the first question is, why do we need a portfolio of technologies? Why is there just not a single technology that does everything. And the key is probably in this slide, as mentioned, technologies will vary in terms of their compatibility with medical devices, with their polymer materials, etc. Radiation technologies have many benefits. They have quick processing times, no gaseous residuals being deposited. So one might say if it could be irradiated, it would be. So that begs the question, why is radiation only deployed to some 50% of single-use device sterilization? And the graphic on this slide is taken from Amy TIR 17, which is an excellent reference uh, on material compatibility. 
and shows the effect of radiation on common polymeric material across our typical dose range, which is 25 to 50 kilograms. As you can see, there's a spectrum of sensitivity to radiation, which in turn necessitates the need for non-radiation processes. And again, if one considers the composition of a device or even a procedure tray of devices, um, it, it's quite an array of polymers. So really all it takes is one polymer to be sensitive to radiation to null and void the, the use of radiation as a potential sterilization process. We can develop strategies to try and reduce the maximum dose, but sometimes it's just not enough. And therefore we, need, we have a need for a gaseous sterilization process with less deleterious effects uh, on poly polymer materials. A distinct advantage of EO is its wide ranging material compatibility. It is why it constitutes some 50% of industrial sterilization today. However, it has the disadvantage in that it's a gaseous process that does take time to get the sterilant in for microbial inactivation and subsequently time to remove excess gas residuals after treatment. As shown on the slide, the process may be subdivided into three distinct stages. Preconditioning, which involves heat and humidity, the sterilization phase itself, and aeration, which uses heat to remove excess residual gas. The sterilization phase itself can take somewhere between six to 12 hours and involves vacuum, humidification, air removal, sterilant penetration, and removal of the sterilant thereafter. We use inert gas, such as nitrogen or carbon dioxide, to reduce the air inside the load to a level that is, that which is not a flammable mixture um, with EO. So in considering packaging, one must consider the impact of us using deep vacuums, typically as low as 70 millibars, temperatures at somewhere between 35 and 60 degrees C, and humidification to anywhere around 60% or H. And one must also then consider the time that the products are going to spend in those conditions. Please note, additional to the typical three-stage approach that I'm shown here, there is also what we call all-in-one processes, where the three stages are performed in a single cycle in the sterilizer itself. The validation of EO sterilization processes is conducted in accordance with ISO 11135, and this is a long and well-established uh, internationally recognized standard for process validation with EO. So when we look at radiation technologies, um, at our disposal, we have three radiation technologies, one using electron energy, uh, two using photon energy. E-beam and X-ray use electricity as an energy source. Gamma uses cobalt-60 as a radiation source. Gamma and E-beam have a long history since the 1960s uh, of use in healthcare sterilization. On the other hand, X-ray, while it has a long and diverse history of use in diagnosis and decontamination, as I show on the slide here with the anthrax biohazard elimination, it's relatively new to the sterilization of single-use devices. The Steris facility in Däniken, Switzerland, was opened in 2010 to offer a large-scale radiation technology alternative to gamma. And Steris have recently announced a number of additional installations around the globe. Both gamma and X-ray, being photon-based technologies, offer excellent penetration, whereby fully palletized products may be treated. Hence, we're now seeing X-ray really being offered as a, a very distinct alternative uh, to gamma in the processing of fully palletized products. On the other hand, e-beam processing more often operates at a carton level to ensure adequate penetration of the electron and the delivery of the strength assurance. Finally, as we talk about some of the differences in the technology, it's equally important to mention that the key common denominator in that all of the technologies deliver a dose, which is responsible for the microbial inactivation. Hence, the same process validation for all three technologies is performed in accordance with ISO 11137.
So to our newest technology, VHP sterilization, it, well, it has, it's a long history in healthcare sterilization as an alternative to EO and steam, but it remains relatively new to industrial sterilization of single-use devices. Like EO, it has a wide material compatibility. However, it does have one key limitation in that it is not suitable for highly absorbent materials such as cellulose. This, this often results in the need for products to be sterilized, packaged only under sterile barrier and prior to final cartoning. So this can become a key consideration in the location of the sterilization process along the manufacturing supply chain. BHP is a surface sterilization process where penetration through narrow lumens might be challenged. Hence, sterilizers are currently limited to one to four pallets in size. The process itself, like EO, is a three-stage process of preconditioning, sterilization, and post-conditioning, involving, again, vacuum, moderate temperature, in this case, 28 to 40 degrees, humidification, and the sterilant itself. A distinct advantage of the VHP process is that it is relatively quick. This process is performed all inside a single chamber and can be done so in anywhere between four to eight hours. So whilst the chamber may be limited in size, the throughput is somewhat compensated because of the quick turn times. And typically, uh, as I said, everything is performed inside the chamber without the need of any secondary aeration of products there afterwards. Similarity to the EO process does add quite an attractiveness of this technology. Again, it's very like EO, it's using a vacuum process. The validation is performed with biological indicators, very similar to what we would do in EO. And the validation is performed in accordance with ISO 14937. As I've already mentioned, sterilization processes require validation. And validation includes everything from commissioning of the equipment and the process right through to the microbiological testing of devices in order to fully appreciate the microbiological challenge that we're trying to address with the sterilization process. Such associated testing are conducted in accordance with defined ISO standards. These standards provide detail on the studies that need to be performed to ensure a minimum FAL is delivered and any effect to the product is known and quantified. Our subject matter experts in the Steris tech team support our customers through all aspects of sterilization validation. Sterilization validation is a holistic activity where many aspects must be considered and assessed to ensure a stable and repeatable process is delivered consistently. However, sterilization must also be considered as merely a portion of the product life cycle. So one thinks about product design to delivery of the patient. Sterilization is one component along that chain. As part of any process validation, the impact of the, that process on the product and its packaging must be assessed. That may include both the sterilization process itself, but also any additional transportation and handling that may, be need, may need to be considered. Some of the typical testing is described in this slide and will be addressed in much more detail in a future tech talk that we're hosting later on this year. So now that we talked a little bit about our history and our current state, let's look a little bit into the future of where we see uh, our sterilization industry. And the first slide I'm going to start here with shows a graphic um, from a publication issued in 2017 um, by IIA uh, GIPA, and that we actually have there supported. And the most interesting point about this graphic is it really emphasizes the reliance we currently have on two technologies. Gamma radiation and EO make up approximately 90% of sterilization capacity. So if one considers what we need as a future state, you know, we need a future state of available and sustainable capacity and technology. We do need to take avail of the opportunity to improve legacy processes. While we continue to diversify and create new technology solutions. In terms of capacity, if we take that aspect here for consideration, if we talk about gamma radiation as an example, 
gamma radiation co currently constitutes approximately 400 million curies globally. The cobalt source decays, hence approximately 50 million curies are needed each year just to replenish the source and stand still. If one considers the industry, grows at 10 to 12 percent. Um, there's another 50 million curies needed just to accommodate that growth in gamma. That collectively constitutes 100 million curies of radiation capacity needed each year from a, from a limited cobalt-60 resource. But therefore, as an industry, we must identify alternative sources of capacity. Um, and hence, our motivation with, within Steris is we believe and our confident X-ray offers that, mo that most accessible um, capacity on a like-for-like -like alternative to gamma. So as I mentioned, you know, we continue to rely on our legacy processes. We shouldn't lose sight of the opportunity to, re to improve those and enhance them. You saw about EO, as I already mentioned, not everything can be irradiated. Therefore, gaseous processes like EO and VHP, while they have their limitations, um, they're very necessary technology. And we must strive to improve and enhance these technologies so that critical medical devices can make their way to patients. The graphic I'm showing here is from our Steris AST Sustainable EO program that we launched some years ago, where we're using innovative approaches to validation. We are reducing the amount of sterling required to deliver surrogate assurance. The graphic on the top right shows the near normal distribution of EO processes shown in terms of EO concentration. We're working every day with our customers to deliver, again, that minimum surrogate assurance, but with optimized processes using only the minimum amount of sterling that is needed. And our goal is to reduce our average concentration by 50% in five years. And we're well on our way to achieving that goal. And again, this is working with our customers, uh, working with our, our tech team, using our ISO internationally recognized standards, and striving and working with the regulators um, to ensure we get that improvement that's necessary for the industry. So one thing about a future state and technology diversity, as I mentioned in the previous slide, if you look at gamma, it actually constitutes some 80% of radiation processing. There's a very real opportunity for accelerator technologies to add to that platform and offer innovative solutions tailored to the product and supply chain needs. You will hear a lot more about these technologies in the upcoming webinars, but it's noteworthy to consider now that the technologies do offer many opportunities you know, reduce maximum doses, which in turn offer opportunity of improved material compatibility and improved lead times. So we have there has actually just written an article on some of the benefits that have just been published this week in an AME publication titled Industrial Sterilization, Process Optimization and Modality Changes. And we were delighted to be invited to participate in that publication. And we've written a, a couple of articles, one on, on X-ray technology, and one on VHP, again, as future-looking technologies for our industry. Continuing on the topic of technology diversity, I've mentioned already, vaporized hydrogen peroxide has a long history of sterilization inside hospitals. And, and actually, sterilists were pioneers in the technology. Today, Sterilists have taken that VHP technology and configured it to an industrial scale sterilizer capable of sterilizing single use medical devices. As I mentioned earlier, we have ISO standards uh, for the technology ISO 14937, but we're actively working within the ISO group um, to develop um, a standalone consensus standard um, for VHP, which would really put it on a, a similar standing to EO and radiation. Why are we doing this? Our technology platform requires more gaseous solutions. And as we push for alternatives in radiation, 
as I said already, some polymers just won't work well in radiation. We'll always need a gaseous solution. PHP does offer some advantages in that it can operate at somewhat lower temperatures even than EO and can give improved lead times with the absence of product residuals. Our service VHP installation, um, which we just qualified under our ISA 13485 registration, is currently engaged in numerous customer projects examining VHP as a sterilization modality for single use devices. So, as much as I've talked a little bit about our technologies and how you know, we're looking to our future with sterilization. Um, all of this really has to be done with, if you like, the real eye and why we're doing it. And really, we have to think about the products, the products that we need to sterilize. So the improvement in pr processes and technology diversity has really been advanced to ensure we have technologies and applications best suited to the future needs of the medical device manufacturing industry. If you think about some of the types of products and technologies that we are being presented with, and we expect to see more of, thinking of things such as 3D print materials, sensor devices, nanotechnology. So these products have very particular sensitivity and they have very particular processing needs. You know, for example, they may need lower temperatures, even quicker turn time, cold chain processing. So as a sterilization industry, we must be ready to have the best technologies to deliver strength assurance to the products and ultimately ensure patient safety. In this section, my, my final slide I just want to touch on is the FDA innovation challenge. Um, very aligned to the technology strategy that I've kind of just described. Um, the FDA last year uh, launched the innovation challenge program. Uh, and really this was a call to the sterilization industry and medical device manufacturers to ask, what are we doing as a stakeholder community to provide long-term sustainable sterilization solutions? So we at Steris AST are participants in the program. Uh, some of the technologies and processes and optimization issues that I described in the previous slide. As you can see on the slide here, there's two challenges that were raised by the FDA. Uh, challenge one was to identify alternatives to EO. And you know, we've we've submitted and been accepted um, around the topics of accelerator based radiation technology and the use of vaporized hydrogen peroxide. And challenge two is develop strategies to reduce ethylene oxide in existing processes. And again, our sustainable EO sterilization program uh, is something we've now engaged with the agency on. And we're very excited to avail of this unique opportunity of engagement, you know, being able to interface with subject matter experts of the FDA uh, as we collectively create technology roadmaps for, for our industry. So in the remaining time for the presentation, um, I've talked a little bit about, I suppose, the technologies and generically um, about the industry. The last number of slides just really specifically about ourselves here in Steros AST, um, and further information can always be gained from the steros-ast.com website. But in terms of Steros as an organization, you know, it was founded as Innovative Medical Technology in Ohio in the US in 1985. Uh, the company was renamed Steris in 1987. And today, we've approximately 13,000 associates worldwide, and we operate in more than 100 countries. We have production and manufacturing facilities in some 20 countries, and we're selling products all over the world. This slide really shows, if you like, the, the scale of what STARES do and really the relevance and importance is to show how we interface and interact with the entire supply chain. And the key takeaway take messages from this slide is that we do support the entire healthcare supply chain that culminates in delivered patient care. In the most simplest terms, our healthcare division supports activities inside the hospital and both Life sciences and ourselves and AST support activities outside. 
our healthcare products, you know, this business segment provides a broad portfolio of infection prevention, procedure and equipment solutions to acute hospitals, um, surgery centres and other healthcare settings. Our healthcare specialty services provide a range of solutions and managed services that includes hospital sterilization services and instruments and, and scope repairs. Our life sciences division, you know, very focused on the pharmaceutical manufacturers and you know, through life science we supply consumable products, equipment, um, maintenance and specialty services. And ourselves in AST and applied sterilization technologies. So we provide contract sterilization and testing support through our network of 50 facilities uh, located in 16 countries around the world. And our customers are primarily medical device and pharmaceutical manufacturers. In AST, our service offering to customers may be subdivided into contract sterilization. Um, and we do this with the largest portfolio of technology solutions. So we're a technology neutral service provider in that we offer unbiased technology assessments dependent on the individual requirements of each product. This is a really important point for us. You know, we want to deliver the best technology and um, so that our customers have the best outcomes on their product. We provide testing services that support the validations of the processes. And the technical support from our tech teams that guide our customers through the validation process. Validation performed at stairs are conducted in accordance with internationally recognized ISO standards. This helps us ensure that our customers can obtain regulatory approval anywhere in the world. I've shown this slide previously when I was talking about the technologies applicable to medical device sterilization. Um, Steris AST provides all of these solutions to our customers around the world. We have the most extensive portfolio of both gas and radiation technologies available from our global network of facilities. So again, we feel with these technologies, you know, we can find the best fit to what the product actually needs. And we believe with our network of facilities, we can find the right location to meet our customer needs. Our test services from our network of accredited laboratories provide microbiological, analytical, packaging and validation testing. The test activities combined with the tech team expertise really help us deliver a complete service offering to our customers. This slide shows how we've deployed our technology and test services around the world. As I mentioned, we're in 16 countries offering our technology neutral service offering. And again, with the backing of a multinational global corporation like Steris, we can tailor our solution to fit our customer needs anywhere in the world. And as you can see from the graphic, we have locations in the Americas, EMEA, and, and Asia. And again, you can find much more details on each of our site locations in steris-ast.com. The purpose of this slide is it's a little bit busy, but really a, a key take home message is that if you look on this slide in an eight year period from uh, 2012 to present day, as you can see by the graphics, we've invested in all of our technologies across all the territories in a continued effort to provide capacity and technology solutions to our customers. And we will continue to do so in line with the requirements of our customers. So we will ensure we have the right, right technologies in the right locations, so that we're there serving our customers. I've mentioned a few times our tech team. Um, the motto of our tech team is we're here to help. Our customers can range from large multinational corporations, if you like, with their own technical expertise. But our customers also range to new startups where they're really learning about sterilization. So again, sterilization and the standards and compliance might be well known to some of our customers or maybe relatively new. 
our tech team with our subject matter experts in our technology and test platforms are there to help all of our customers. I'm proud to say our tech team were very involved in the development of standards and therefore we feel very well placed to give the correct advice and guidance and ensure regulatory compliance. And regarding, we talked a lot about technologies and future, um, but it, it starts behind the scenes. It starts, you know, when we look to develop a new technology and solutions, there's often extensive development activity. Uh, and this slide has just shown a little bit of, for instance, what we've been doing over the last few years around VHP. And being part of a large and diverse service organization allowed us to tap into the scientific knowledge within the wider service community and develop solutions for our customers, for example, here with VHP. So we've leveraged the expertise of our healthcare division in VHP, and we've worked at our industrial scale to investigate the microbiome and activation of the sterilus, if you like it, in our application. And also this work, we're using latest microbiology techniques, a really focus on gaining the best and deepest understanding we can of the process because ultimately that will help us design the most efficient process best suited to the needs of the medical device product. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is the first of a series of webinars where you hear directly from the tech team, subject matter experts on each of the technology platforms used in industrial sterilization. The talks are organized into technology streams as shown on the slide. So please consult the Steris AST website for information on dates of specific talks. And just want to thank you for your time today. I believe we now have some time for questions. Um, given this was an introductory um, webinar, uh, if there is specific questions relating to a technology, um, it may be something that we probably address in one of the future webinars, um, but we'll do our best to answer any questions that you may have today. So again, thank you for your time um, uh, today in the presentation and uh, look forward to speaking to you during the Q&A session. This concludes the webinar.